I don't want to break this window. I don't want to break this window. Okay, then it's really simple. Don't do what you just said you don't want to do. Break your window. And he broke the window anyway. And why did they break his window, cuff him, and drag him out of his car? Zero probable cause. Again, no crime had been committed. This guy's name is Nick Hoskins. When he was 21, he was charged, convicted, and imprisoned for conspiracy to commit murder. After eight years behind bars, they released him because they found out they really don't even have any direct evidence tying him to the crime. But that doesn't mean Nick is a free man. You think the San Diego Police Department is going to let Nick freely travel down the road without harassing him? Let's take a look at this stop right here. On the ID. I handed it off. Hoskins, H-O-S-K-I-N-S. I can't hear you slide out. H-O-S-K-I-N-S. H-O-S-K-I-N-S. Mm -hmm. And your first name? Nicholas. I'm sorry? Nicholas. Regular spelling, N-I-C-H. O-L-A-S. And your birthday, Nicholas? Where are you coming from? Uh, I just came from the park. I'm about to go pick my son up from school. From the park? Which one? We were, we all, uh, South Crest. Okay. Just hanging out or? Mm-hmm. What do you got? By the way, he's supposedly stopped for rolling through a stop sign. That's all this is. So where you're coming from, where you're going, what you're doing, and all these questions in between have nothing to do with the reason for the stop. Going on? Nothing. Nothing? Okay. What's your address, Nicholas? Is that a house or an apartment? Apartment. What's the number? Uh, that's a phone number for you. Sorry, what was the last word of the number? All right, Nicholas, anything in the car? No. No? All right, go ahead and undo your seatbelt for me. I'm going to have you get out. Just make sure there's no weapons. I'm not, I'm, not about to, I'm not about to get out the car. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, okay? You're going to take your seatbelt off. I'm, you're going to put I'm, your wallet in the center console. You guys can have my ID back and you guys can call your uh, supervisor. No, I'm telling you what's going to happen, okay? I don't want to... I, I have to 15 minutes to go get my son. He gets, okay. He's getting dropped up at the uh, bus okay. at 4.30. Nicholas, I'm going to open the door. You're going to undo your seatbelt for you, okay? You're an adult. I want you to kind of go with the program here. I don't want to have to do this. What is the probable cause for a search? So unlock the door for me. I want you to go with the program. I want you to go with my program, says the cop. Well, guess what the cop's program is supposed to be? The cop's program is supposed to be the constitutional program. This man should not be harassed if the cop is actually doing his job and fulfilling and honoring his oath. What's the probable cause for a search? Sir? Nicholas, unlock the car. What is the probable cause for a search? Where's the probable cause for a search? I'm gonna break your window if you wanna play this game. If you want to play this game, if you want to play this game of exerting your rights, we're going to break the window and we're going to enter the car and we're going to cuff you and we're going to drag you out playing this game. Have you noticed that you're just playing a game when you're standing for your rights? And by the way, when you're standing for your rights, you're standing for the rights of every single person who the cops want to put in this position. When an injustice happens to one man anywhere, injustice happens to all men everywhere. When you're standing for your rights as one man anywhere, you're standing for the rights of all men everywhere. Hmm. Do you want to go pick up your kid or not? I want to, but I'm not stepping out the court. The so now they're going to hold him hostage. And unless they he bows, unless Nicholas bows to their will, He's not going to be able to pick up his kid. What if something happens when the bus driver drops the kid off at 430 and the kid gets kidnapped because the dad's not there because the dad's being tied up and hemmed in by the cops who are doing something extremely unconstitutional to him? I'm not on. I'm not a fourth waiver. I'm not unlock about to get out. I'm not about to be searched. Roll down the window or unlock the door. I'm not about to be searched. Call your supervisor. Undo your seatbelt and unlock the door. Here's what's going to happen, man. I'm telling you what's going to happen, okay? Here's the deal. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You're going to follow my program. I'm not on your time. You're on my time. Can you call your supervisor? Shut the car off. Can you call your supervisor? They're on their way. Turn the car off. Are you listening to me? So you, are, you I want you to get on camera. You guys are violating my camera. It's on my camera. You guys are violating my rights. I'm about to search me for what? 
We're gonna ensure there's nothing dangerous in this Silence. car. Silence. There's nothing sure dangerous in this car. I'm, I'm, I'm a black male. I'm gonna make sure, okay? I'm not a fourth waiver. You, you shouldn't have to make sure. I'm not a fourth, I know my rights. I'm telling you what's gonna happen. Now he said this a couple times. I'm not a fourth waiver. A fourth waiver is a parolee who waives his fourth amendment right to be secure in his person's houses, papers and effects. And basically they can search him. They can seize his property at will without his consent. That's what a fourth waiver is. Okay. I'll, I'm telling you that I'm, I'm telling you. Get out of the car. I will, I will, it's We're on camera. Sure there's no weapons or anything dangerous. There's no weapons in the car. Okay. Call your supervisor. I know my rights. I'm not a fourth waiver. Undo the, or, uh, unlock the car. I am not a fourth unlock waiver. Unlock the door. No. I don't want to break this window. No. Do you understand? You guys. I don't want to break this window, but you're going to force my hand and you're going to make me break your window. You're going to make me destroy your property, aren't you? By the way, his car gets impounded. That's a thousand bucks. Then he had to pay for a window to get fixed that didn't really get fixed. It's kind of a floppy window, the window that doesn't work right anymore because of what the cops did based on no probable cause. You guys going to assault me then? Turn the car off. Are you going to, are you going to assault me? I just want to get that on. Are you going to assault me? Turn are you going to assault me on camera? Huh? You can assault me. Go ahead. If you're going to assault me, go ahead. I don't want to. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm, I'm driving. I'm on the freeway. You guys are pulling me over. Can I have my ticket and go? I know my rights. I'm telling you what to do, okay? You need to. Yeah, if the traffic stop is because you believe I rolled through a stop sign and violated some kind of traffic law, then just give me a ticket. Stop harassing me. Listen to me. I don't have, I'm not, but I'm not a fourth waiver. I know it. You guys only have a right to search people that are fourth waivers. This isn't a fourth waiver thing going What is it right a search now? for? I told you. Okay, so he's saying that this isn't a fourth waiver thing, but we are not going to recognize your Fourth Amendment right to be secure in your persons right now. In other words, the way this cop is acting is his mentality is Nicholas or anybody he pulls over like this doesn't have a constitutional right to be secure. That's what the cops say by their actions. What is your probable cause for the search? Because I'm a black male? Huh? Am I a black, am I a black male and you, I'm getting pulled over because I'm a black male? to do with it. Are you, are you guys aren't pulling over any other cars. Unlock the car. We're going to break the window. It's, this is your last chance. I guess you're going to have to do that. I want you guys to violate my rights and do all this. Get it on camera so I can sue you. This doesn't need to happen, man. It doesn't need to happen. You guys don't need to search me. I'm about to go pick my son. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm a taxpayer. This doesn't need to happen, says the guy who's making it all happen. I'm a citizen. I'm not on paperwork or parole. I'm not doing anything wrong. Go ahead. This is exactly like a rapist saying, well, I don't want to rape you, but you, it looks like you're going to make me or the murder. Well, he made me murder him. It's just nonsense. Break your window. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. I'm getting out. Undo your seatbelt. You guys just broke my window. Put your left hand behind your back. You guys just broke my window and put your right hand behind your back. You guys just violated my rights. How does that affect you? It's kind of like the demeaning, the masculating. You know, there's an aftermath to all this. Like I said, it cost him about a thousand dollars to get his car out of impound. Then he probably had to pay a couple hundred bucks to get his window fixed, which isn't fixed right, according to this news article. Oh, still all up in here. Hoskins says it cost him about a thousand dollars to get his car back from impound and replace the smashed window. See, it just rolls down by itself. With one that doesn't really work. I, mean, I think it messed up. Sucks, man. It sucks. These cops do not care about what kind of havoc they wreak on your life. They don't care. And isn't it ironically perverted that they call themselves our protectors and servants and heroes? The thin blue line heroes making life tougher for the rest of us. Listen to what this police captain, Jeffrey Jordan, has to say about the unconstitutional actions of his officers in the San Diego PD. Disparities, to be really clear, is a difference in how communities experience policing. The studies that have been done are not associated necessarily with bias, racism, discrimination. They focus on disparities. In an effort to address those racial disparities, Jordan says the department intentionally stopped fewer people. We made a concerted effort. They made a concerted effort to stop 
fewer people, that's not the answer to the unconstitutional actions of his police officers. It's not about making it, okay, guys, we're going to go out there and we're going to make an effort to make fewer stops today. They should be intent on, hey, okay, guys, primary objective. Remember, today, as always, we need to protect the rights of the people in our community. That is our sole job. That's our sole reason. That's our sole purpose for existence, not to follow policies and procedures, not to make fewer stops. This guy is a complete idiot. And let's be really clear. And I want to be clear about this. You know, reducing disparities is not the sole governance of the San Diego Police Department in this city. It shouldn't be any part of it. You shouldn't be out there to reduce disparities. You shouldn't be out there to enforce the law. You should be out there protecting rights. And if somebody violates the rights of another, that's when you spring into action. When a crime is actually committed against somebody else, not a fabricated traffic crime so you can conduct a fishing expedition on people. There's a lot of other players that are involved in this. Again, we're going to police the way, you know, that we're directed, that our community directs us, the way our elected officials are directing us. We're going to police the way we're directed, his sole job, like I said, he should only be interested in protecting and upholding rights per his oath of office. I swear to protect and defend the constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, full stop, done. It's not about policing. It's not about following the directives of elected officials. It's not about following policies and procedures. It's not even about doing what the majority wants you to do. What if what the majority wants you to do is wrong? What if it's unjust? What if it's immoral? Your only job, Captain, and all you underlings in the San Diego Police Department, is to protect rights, not to violate them. The biggest gross violators of rights don't happen to be the regular citizenry. It's the law enforcement agents who claim to be the heroes of the community, the protectors and servants of rights. Isn't that ironic? People don't necessarily realize, but about 90% of all our searches within the city of San Diego are dictated by policies and procedures. Well, there you go. Let's listen to that again. Really realize, but about 90% of all our searches within the city of San Diego are dictated by policies and procedures. Almost all of our searches are dictated by our policies. It's not dictated by we, the people of the United States. It's not dictated by you have the right to be secure in your person's houses, papers, and effects. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, grab a hard hitting conversation starting design you can get on a shirt, hoodie, mug, hat, cell phone case, pillowcase, whatever you want. Become a channel member, but more importantly, know what your rights are and exercise your rights because I'm telling you, people like this, want to take your rights away. I'll see you in the next video.